flavors. People really care about how the weed smokes. You know, I don't think that the ed the consumers are as educated in some of the smaller markets. So you're not gonna have like a lot of people buying expensive bags. You know, it's like yeah. really like the blue collar guy. He wants a a cheap distillate cart, and you know what I mean, something something cheap that's not gonna break the bank. Yeah. So that's what a lot of my clients are making money on right now. You know, they're not making money on high end dabbables. They're making money on vape pens, live resin carts. Um, yeah. A lot of the inputs, you know, a lot of the um, extracts get used as ingredients for, yeah, for edibles or for um, infusions. For, yeah, infusions, yep. pre rolls, exactly. We've seen that. We've seen that, and and honestly, that's. You know our concentrate business is still is still good, um, but you have limited amounts of connoisseurs. You have limited amounts of of people that um, really care. You know what it tastes like. Care. You know what I mean. What what they're smoking. What they're putting in their body. They don't give a fuck if it's live. They don't give a fuck. You know what I mean. If it's some special fucking strain, they you know right. unfortunately want to know if it's sativa or indica because they think that really tells them something. And then that's about it. Yep. And and how much THC is in it? Yeah, yeah. the The consumer knowledge is isn't quite there. But even then, like you compare it to alcohol, like you know, it's the same. It's and the I, same. I was just having. That's you know, funny you, you bring that up. I was just having the same conversation and I was like, there's a whole crowd that goes and buys expensive, you know, multiple hundred dollar to thousand dollar bottles of whiskey. And then there's, you know, there's people that are whatever bottles of vodka. And then there's people that go and buy fucking 99 bananas. Yeah. And, and that's, that's their drink and they like it. And they'll tell you that's their favorite or whatever. And, you know, you'll have a whole, you know, amount of people that'll say oh that's fucking gross that's gut rot like you know what i mean that stuff's horrible so it's the same thing with well you look at the anything. shelf too yeah. look at the shelf at the at the store right like the the good stuff has less shelf space and like yeah there's more economy stuff yeah. that has more shelf space you know because that's what sells and that's what pays the bills yep so i think for like a lot of companies you know getting into weed like you know, your best bet is to just diversify and hit all those markets and realize that you're probably going to be the the bulk of what you do is going to be economy. You know, that's going to pay your bills, basically yeah. keep you alive. Well, and you got to be able to to keep up with the trends and what's what's hot and what's not because it changes. Right. A big thing too is genetics. Like a lot of the economy brands. They don't, they're just running bag seat. So they're just like slapping labels on stuff yep. that it's, there's no. And just making it up as they go. No continuity between what's actually being grown genetically and what it's labeled as. You know what I mean? So yeah, like that's a big thing for me when as a consumer, like I won't always go for the most expensive bag, but if there's a brand that I know has good continuity between their genetics and, you know, what the finished form is, then I'll, I'll run it, you know? Um, but I don't want to buy some runts and, you know, or even like the gelato craze is crazy on the West coast, you know, LCGs, you know, everything kind of tastes the same. So it's yeah. hard to, to like figure out which one is actually the real genetics, you know what I mean? Bred by the people that yeah. made them, made them happen. I've had a couple, a, a couple grower friends that would be like, Oh, they'll, they'll, they'll call something out and be like, that's not whatever, right. you know, and they'll, they'll take it a step farther and say, you know, look at the structure of this, look at this, look at this. And one of them actually pulled up some pictures and he's like, look, bro. And it was, and it was completely, I mean, just night and day to these pictures. Um, so yeah, no, some people know their shit and, and yeah. you know, just like any other species or subspecies or phenotype, it, it's gonna have its own characteristics. And like you said, trusting, you know, that source and where you're getting it from, where you're getting your genetics from is super fucking important. Yeah, I mean, you wanna have uh, trust with your customers, right? So like yeah. if a bag says something, when they open it up, they want it to smell like that. They want it to be that, that thing, you know, like even this, like this RS-11, it's really popular on the West Coast. What is RS-11? Because no, I haven't even heard of that one. Pretty sure it's, it's rain, rainbow sherbet. It's okay. bred by, I'm pretty sure, by Deep East. And, uh, 
you know, I seen a lot of the hype boys, like yeah. the homie Sour Waves and yeah. like Doja Pack and Wizard Trees, you know, like those guys are like names in high quality cannabis. They're, they've been rocking it, you know, my homie got a cut of it. He bought a bunch of cuts and yeah, it's bomb. It's bomb, you know, like, and when I bust this out, and I'm like, yeah, it's some RS11. A lot of people haven't tried it, but they've heard it. I've heard of Rainbow Server. I didn't know it was Rainbow Server. Yeah. I, I, was, I was trying to put it in, together in my head, but it's been a long day. I mean, they, they've heard of it, but they might not have tried it. So they're excited to try it, right? And the worst thing is when you're excited to try something, and then it's just like a dud, you know? <laughs> That's the worst. That's the worst feeling, you know? I've been there. Being hyped to get your hands on something, and then you go to the dispensary, you buy it, and it's not it. You yeah. Know? I'm never buying that brand ever again after that. Yeah. You know, so first impressions are are everything, you know, when like you hand a lot of people hand me jars to like, you know, cuz they want to see what my opinion is of it. And I tell people straight up like, you know, this this one's not it. Yeah. And uh, you know, some people get butt hurt by it, but other people are like, okay, yeah, you know, what can I do differently or, you know, what do you think I should do? And you just tell them, like, this is what I see from a lot of people doing their thing. And then, you know, try to meet me. You know, there's a, a bit. there's a lot of guys that have come into the game and, you know, from all walks of life. And they just don't have a respect for flavor in cannabis. They don't have a respect for good weed. And it's usually because they don't fucking smoke, but they're right. just looking at money. And those companies, I really feel like, th are going to be like eliminated through the whole country eventually. Yeah. Um, because it's just people are going to end up just growing good weed. It's going to get to the point where it's not even worth the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think there's a couple of different ways it can play out. I think, you know, back to genetics, like having the right genetics and breeding genetics. That's good. And curating you know, flavors is a way for the culture to stay alive in the, the way that this game is evolving. You know, like more and more, a lot of the infrastructure is owned by corporate companies that don't have the same passion for cannabis, right? But um, they have the money to yeah. build the infrastructure to lower the cost of goods to, you know, disrupt the market. Yeah. And they're, they're like, at that. you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the ones that really win is the ones that like work with the culture and yeah. work with the guys that are tapped into yeah. those guys that have the genetics and stuff like that. You know, I've seen some some really big facilities that I was really impressed by the quality at scale. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's out there, it's doable. But at the end of the day, like we were talking about, like people just are gonna buy the booth because it's cheaper, you know? And <coughs> that's okay. Like I'm cool with with connoisseur cannabis being its own lane too you know because yeah. it's it is special you know it's, it's cool and that breaks it down to like the extracts too you know yeah um, the rosin wave is real right now everybody wants the rosin and yep. i get it you know like good rosin done right is next to perfect you know it's it, it's an amazing experience but i think there's there's good uh there's there's stuff that competes with that that's not rosin, you know, BHO, for example, you know, yeah, specifically is what I'm talking about. BHO done right with the right starting material <coughs> is also next to perfect, you know, of an experience um, flavor wise and and consumption wise. Like it's it's just as good, you know. The cool thing is that you can do BHO at scale for a lot cheaper than you can with the rosin, so you're able to provide like a quality product for a more affordable price. Yeah. Well, and people, so, so it's funny you said that because most people usually go the other route and they'll be like, well, rosin's cheaper. And in the end, it's not due to yield and due to, you know what I mean? What kind of material and how you have to feed that beast. Um, in the end, your, your yields and your return on investment is much higher running BHO. Yeah. Um, and most people don't realize that because yes, that initial cost, right. it's like fucking solar. <laughs> that initial cost is high, right. um, you know, to get set up right. But then, uh, 
but then yeah as as you go it 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 pays you back yeah totally it is a little bit overwhelming too like when you think about you know <coughs> like we're basically basically <coughs> competing with a, i always say this like we're competing with a brute trash can you know what i mean like <laughs> people make some of the best hash in brute trash cans yeah. and like shout out to 710 labs for sure but it was like the most incredible thing I thought, I've ever uh, seen. What's, what's her name? Fucking Murphy Murray exposed them. They're not using boots Nah, anymore. bro. I've been there. I've seen it with my own two eyes. Using. The main ingredient is is a boom box, bro. And they, it's, and it's crime. Fools are dancing and they're washing hash and it's a beautiful thing. And they make some really good stuff with, you know, with the brutes. And, you know, it's, no, it's a, all about it's, the material. It's cheaper, at that point. yeah, right. But it's just cheaper infrastructure-wise to to do rosin, right, or to do water hash. Yeah. And when you start looking at like C one D one environments and yeah, start talking like fire marshals and yeah, it's a lot. It's really overwhelming. It turns a lot of people off. So, it's a yeah. large barrier for entry. Right. It's overwhelming for people. So yeah. you know, but it's it's a thing. You know, there's a lot. We got. Just us specifically, you know, we have a, about 300 <laughs> operating machines, I would say, in the field. Um, and some of the coolest names in cannabis ro rocking with us, um, you know, from state to state. And there's some like really cool stuff yeah. going on out there. You know what I mean? We should probably start the podcast. Welcome to the farm table. <laughs> yeah we just kind of got into it yeah. I, was, I was eager to start smoking honestly yeah, yeah. Um, why don't so for those of you that I'm sure Jess has been recording so for those of you that uh, that have been watching why don't you introduce yourself I'm Kyle uh, I'm with Busy Bee uh, Extractors we make BHO extraction equipment um, yeah you know been rocking with you for a few years now fuck yeah um and yeah, we've got machines all over, you know, um, got the West Coast pretty locked down, um, got the East Coast. Your client list is crazy. I've seen the, like the graphic you guys yeah. put up recently. Yeah. It's a lot. I mean, you know, that's like the best, that's like the most rewarding thing yeah. about the job, right? Is like, look at the client list and look at who we're working with. And it, it's, it's incredible, honestly. Like, it's the best extractors in the country. Yeah, you know, I, would say, I mean, I would say at the end there of the might day, be a few in there that you aren't working with, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, totally. There's, uh, yeah, about ninety percent of the best extractors are rocking yeah. with us. Even just like the emerald cut list just came out, and for all the hydrocarbon categories, our clients took the <coughs> majority of yeah, you know, all the trophies for hydrocarbon stuff. So hell yeah, yeah, we're working with some cool dudes and gals, um, brands you know, out there and anywhere from just like um, great extraction, you know, focused operations um, to single sourced operations that, you know, dope brands that grow really good flour that process it themselves, um, which is always like also you know, a cool sight to see. Yeah. Well, you've of, probably seen some fucking mega badass facilities. Man, blown away. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, they're, you know, I'll just go ahead and say it. Like the best facility I've seen so far was uh, in Florida. Yeah, and, shout them out. Which is crazy. Yeah. Like the Flowery in Florida. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's um, the name of it. The Flowery. The Flowery. Okay. Right? I um, never heard of them. I have to check. I'm pretty them out. sure Preferred Gardens is the one who handled the grow side of yeah. things. And Preferred Gardens, I mean, they're like up yeah. there with some. The extracts know, are called Flowery though. No, the the whole operation is called the okay. Flowery. They have okay. dispensaries all okay. throughout Florida. Um, they. Uh, 710 Labs is rocking with them as well. Okay. Um, so it's like a house of brands. Uh, I know, okay. I, you know, I've met one of the growers, this dude, Brian, he's crushing it. And um, their uh, extraction director is uh, this dude, Joey. And man, incredible facility. Yeah. Like quality at scale. Remember I, was, I was saying that, like quality at scale, it's like so hard to achieve. And these guys got it locked down. There's very few that do, yeah. you know. These guys got it locked down. Their rosin, their BHO stuff, like 
I mean, all, it all starts with the flour, right? Yeah. So take one look at their flour and you already know, like yeah. everything in there is dank. <coughs> so that one I was super impressed by. There was absolutely no mids in there yeah. like, whatsoever. Well, and that's something that's been difficult as, uh, as we've gone through our growth is we've never had a grow. So we process for everybody. Right. And uh, as we started talking about in the beginning, all flour is not created equal. Like right. there's, there's definitely some big differences. There's, you know, only certain stuff that I like to smoke. There's only, you know, right. I'm really, really picky. And uh, we've, you know, to make, make money and, and be smart business-wise, we've worked with everybody. Um, we pride ourselves on, you know, we can, whatever you got, we can make it the best, you know, it can possibly be. But man, not all cannabis is created equal and not all extracts is obviously created equal. So yeah, I'm really excited to see the day when everything kind of shifts to like no mids and you know or to the day where yeah that's the only thing people are growing or you know what i mean actually putting effort in is to just fire totally well i think a lot of it too is uh how the plant is handled after it's harvested you know um people like you even washington specifically everything is um like it's all packaged up so you can't smell the weed before you know choosing yeah. it or nothing like that so that fucks it, me up in the shop oh it's like you're playing the lottery yeah right because like you could look at a jar it could look super fire yeah it could you know you can look at the test results whatever but as soon as you crack it it's hey you know, yeah it smells like hey because well, it the cure is everything the cure is everything yeah. you know what i mean and a lot of people mess it up at that step you can grow some imagine like growing some super fire weed looks really fire smells fire when yeah. you're packaging up or whatever the customer gets it they're not buying your shit yeah man, you know? well we have the opposite problem of you so so you guys are up in seattle um and you guys got all the humidity we were down here in the desert so we've got super dry weird conditions um well it'll come in and out you guys fucking brought the rain with you yeah. so as you can see so but the conditions change so drastically they're desert harsh conditions that yeah a lot of people just fuck up right off the bat with with curing out here they they dry it out way too quick yeah. um so i'm sure you guys have the opposite problem you probably have big mold problems out there yeah there's a lot of moldy weed i mean with us you just you, here too but you know yeah. the uh the grower and you know the brand and the, yeah you you know you roll the dice you buy a few different brands you <sighs> find the ones you like and you roll with them you know even in Washington too, we've been pretty impressed. Like we work with some of the yeah. best flower companies too. You yeah, know? I've yeah. seen your guys' video. Your media team is pretty dope. They, uh, the videos you guys have made from the different facilities you guys have toured um, are sick, dude. Yeah, it's, it's like a win-win for both our clients and for us, right? Because like we make good stuff, they make good stuff. We're working together. Let's show everyone who we're working with and then it makes people kind of like take a look at us more. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Our client list is our best selling point, to be honest. Um, we have great gear. We have a great team. Um, everyone on the team is solid. But the word of mouth and, oh, so-and-so's running your machine. Oh, these yeah. dudes are running your machine. You know, and we got everybody from like the literally the, what I know of as being the biggest um, live resin production going on to some of the smallest boutique yeah. stuff, you know? So we, we cater to everyone in between. And our stuff is like really simple to use. And yeah. I think that's why a lot of people like it. I think um, having control over the variables is also like a big factor for people. But uh, yeah, for, you know, we just, we got lucky. We sold to <coughs> machines to a couple like legends early on and the clout kind of grew from there i guess if yeah you, you know and it kind of well, like you're spread. right people want to know so the 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 hash community and especially the butane community <coughs> started out so small that yeah people wanted to know what other guys were running <coughs> in fact a lot of guys would hide it you know what yeah. i mean they'd fucking cover their machine in pictures and you know what i mean they'd be real secretive about it um well yeah and shout out to boris because like really <coughs> all this is possible because of boris Boris, who was it, supposed to be here but missed his yeah. flight. <laughs> yeah, pretty. It's on brand though. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, perfect, perfect. Um, we'll see him eventually. Yeah, this trip. Yeah, he will pop up <laughs> with the yerba in his hand and like a cup of soup, maybe. You know, be ready to party. Um, 
but yeah, no, he, you know, early on, early on in like the weed kind of being on Instagram. So like 2014, I think is what, when it was, is he made an Instagram to showcase the experiments that he was doing after work, basically. And he was doing, running BHO. Yeah. And like got it, took his signing bonus from Microsoft and bought a little ETS and started doing experiments, you know, in the medical days. Yeah. And, um, you know, essentially it kind of snowballed from there. And like in a series of perfect storms, like meeting the right people at the right time, like yeah. Busy B kind of was born and started to grow rapidly, right? So he had made an Instagram, started just showcasing his experiments and sharing his data and People liked that, you know, because people were hungry for it. At the well, time. And l l nobody was saying shit. Everybody was keeping right. it secret. There's a couple of people. Wanna, yeah. There's a couple of people out there like, you know, like uh, OG Brett Maverick, you know, yeah. and like uh, <laughs> and, you know, a couple of early dudes that were also on that wave for sure. But Boris kind of <laughs> those dudes were all making hash. And Boris was honestly more interested in making the machinery to make the best hash. Right. So he envisioned that there was going to be money in it, that oh, everybody yeah. was going to need one. I think that's why he dumped his, I mean, he'll tell you, he dumped his uh, signing bonus into, yeah. you know, into trapping basically and doing experiments to make a machine. And because he, you know, it's a long story too. You yeah. Know, he got locked and up. And I've, heard, for I've weed. heard bits and pieces. Yeah, of it. yeah, yeah, yeah for man. Sure. He, he got locked up for weed because he was moving beasters back in the day. And then, fuck yeah. Yeah, you know, like he, he's an OG. He's Free got market. He's got stripes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, he had to go sit in the camp for a year. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he got a, a, a degree in computer science and got a job at Microsoft, got a $20,000 signing bonus. Boom. Put that on a machine started doing this thing, right? And started taking like pre-orders basically for <laughs> machines, right? Like no lie, like when I came on, <clears throat> it was a uh, March 2015 and like the first client came and picked up his machine. And it had been like probably 12 months since he had put in a deposit or something, you know what I mean? Like yes. uh, nah, probably like uh probably 6 months, 6 yeah. to 9 months, you know, but he, he was waiting though for and sure. And he's you know, he's the homie still. We still, that's a, another thing is like all of our clients become like family. You yeah. Know, we hang out with our clients. We, you know, check in on our clients. It's, you know, me and Calvin, we take pride in like forming relationships with the people yeah. we work with because we like our work. You know, it's fun for us. So back to Boris, you know, he, he was doing his thing. It created a big following to the point where, you know, everyone, that was doing BHL had their eyes on him and knew about him and knew about the hardware that he was making and the innovations to, you know, what was like at that point, there wasn't a lot of competition. Yeah. You know, ETS was doing their thing and then Precision had came online too and Iron Fist was around. Um, <coughs> and out of nowhere, you know, Boris appeared with his machines and we used to do, it was crazy, man. Like back in the early days was, crazy like yeah definitely myself and calvin and billy have put in some work you know yeah. like for sure uh, moving around like chasing boris around is also just like yeah. another crazy task but you know the situations you, you end up in out of that. yeah and like early on you know sometimes you be end up in the hills you know in humble or southern oregon or something you know and like <coughs> you know with at people's farm and, <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, things just end up, were crazy back then. Things have gotten a lot more, it's, have changed drastically, you know. And the whole scene and the whole industry has kind of matured. Yeah. You know, over the last, it's been almost eight years now that I've been working with Boris. Well, in the beginning, it was just stepping out of black market. And it was like yeah. this weird, like, gray, white, weird market. Yeah, it was weird, bro. <laughs> but at the beginning, people were just coming to us with grocery bags full of $20 bills, right? And, <laughs> And like it was to the point where we were busy enough at the, like for how we were growing, we were just so busy that we would make people like bank face their money before <laughs> bringing it to us. You know what I mean? Like now I'm like, 
uh are you guys gonna send the wire <laughs> you know like <laughs> like uh did you guys vote on that yet um did, did they release the funds hey just checking in again are we gonna see a wire today you know like it's crazy <clears throat> like the way things move now is much different but it's cool because you know things are on a much more like official scale now you know like we're yeah. walking into commercial buildings now we're not like going out to the hills you know yeah like, thanks to bizcon yeah you know i mean <laughs> just changed the whole the, changed the whole it really did you the know? whole industry i think those conventions really like it brought that corporate side and all the vendors and everything to these the street side to the fucking chads that were trying to invest yeah. um and do something so no i think uh I think, well, and at the end of the day, it, it's like a beautiful balance, you know, yeah. like you have to have a balance. You have to have like a Chad on your team to like navigate that Chad world. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you want to work at a certain scale, like otherwise, like, you know, it's just it's hard to maintain like this crazy dynamic you know, yeah. industry that's very volatile and changes overnight. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you shout out to anybody that. doing cannabis legally because it's not a, a task for the faint of heart. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if, and if it wasn't hard, everybody yeah. would be doing it. You Did know? you guys, you guys saw it real, just like everybody else with the hemp, when the hemp fucking popped and the whole, that was crazy. The whole hemp apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. it was crazy. You guys, you guys make a lot of sales those years? Oh, yeah, man. Fuck, yeah. Oh, yeah, we were selling falling films left and right, like <laughs> faster than we could make them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And... We're still sitting on a bunch of falling. I've film seen. Inventory. Is Boris still got that monster that he had? Yeah, that thing's still <laughs> sitting around. So anybody want to do some large scale like ethanol processing, two like story, six tons a day type vibe? You know, like steel catwalks. Yeah, they got that thing still. Yeah, I'll holler at them. I think they're nice. looking for a home for it. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, you know, it, the the hemp <coughs> the hemp wave was just like a whole nother beast. Um, you know, we did a lot of business in places I never thought I'd be doing business in like yeah. north carolina and like kentucky and stuff and that was cool um it was a way different vibe i think there was just everybody had their heads up their asses they didn't know <laughs> you know they didn't know the ass from their they elbow were just trying to throw fucking money dude everybody was just like i can get this much investment right. i can get this much and and there was just these crazy numbers being thrown out well think about the poor farmers that like put all their you know energy and resources into like growing big hemp crops and then not knowing what to do with it and oh, yeah. it just like all molded oh, yeah. and oh, rotted sad, and a handful of them killed themselves dude it was yeah, it was fucked know, up man it was a crazy wave that was like high spike and then just quick drop off just died overnight yeah. with like vape gate and you yep. know other stuff but i think big one was vape gate i think a big one was all the, the big surplus of hemp and yeah. cbd and you know, there's people still out there doing the CBD thing. The whole conversions thing happened out of that, and that that they whole just, scene is crazy. There's still that's kind of current current affairs. They're yeah. still releasing shit. I want to say the feds just. I had to Google it. Um, I want to say the feds just fucking released something about uh, converted CBD. Yeah, I had seen Delta that. Delta eight, some different shit. Yeah, Put, um, trying to classify it under the Controlled Substance Act. I yeah, did read something about that for sure. <laughs> you know. It's changing every day though, bro. They're they're selling THC in gas stations. You know what I mean? I see people on Instagram like crazy, like selling. They're saying it's like a farm bill THCA flower, which is like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, dude, you know? <laughs> dude, I got fucking. There's like places in places that you can't do anything cannabis that are pumping out like mega labs that are pumping out like fucking diamonds, THCA diamonds, oh, yeah. THCA products. I'm, you name it, everything we make. Yeah. And they're somehow like, fuck. Selling it in a gas station. Working in a loop. <laughs> I, and they say, the, and, and I've, I've had a couple people like try to explain like the loophole and it just doesn't make any fucking sense. I'm like, no, no, actually, no, no. What you're doing. I mean, whatever, you know, like more power to you. But to everybody out there, like that gas station THC is not what you want to be. Put, you know, it's just not what you want to be smoking. You know, there's a few um i won't name any names but there's a few prominent members in the extraction community that are really speaking out about you know what are these byproducts and all these all this bullshit from the conversions um gonna do to people's you know it vital organs over time 
Um, somebody was talking about fucking kidney damage and different sh type of damage from having these like dirty byproducts in, you know, poorly converted um, cannabinoids. And it, I mean, it makes sense. I don't know the actual fucking study. I didn't do the study. I didn't, you know, I don't know why it, it, it hurts your body. But can you fucking imagine if we got like 10 years down the road and everybody that smoked that gas station bullshit and the smoke shop fucking bullshit is like fucked? Yeah, I don't know. It's going to be that, a commercial. I don't know if it's that serious. I mean, like fools do crazy shit and they're still like. Well, sure, we smoked you know? all that fucking Mexican weed fucking soaked in gasoline and fucking dead oh, yeah. birds and shit. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Who knows? That stuff is just not it, though. You know, yeah. it's like not what you want to be doing. Like, go with you know to your local weed shop <laughs> and get some not. and if not like you know get with a, a someone you know who like gets high and knows about it because people really need to be put on game to what's out there like what's available out there there's plenty of like regular weed you yeah. know what i mean like to, to smoke this day and age it's not a, you don't gotta like even have a plug anymore you could find legit shit i mean i guess if you are in like a crazy state that you know a super you know prohibiting these um, these butt tenders be um leaning people in the or pointing people in the wrong direction you know yeah. what i mean because they're just like they hit you with the indica sativa hybrid bullshit and then you know i guess it's whatever you're after for sure but uh and some people are really after like oh i want the sativa weed because i like the way it makes me feel or like i smoke for flavor so like i'm really looking at genetics yeah and, like what's gonna taste like what you know personally i don't get too stupid like stoned anymore i do i'm the same way i just i want i want it to taste good i obviously get a head change mm -hmm. or i don't think i do it but <clears throat> more than anything it's taste it's yeah flavor. yeah yeah i mean i like smoking good weed it puts me in the right state of mind um you know it's just like some people take adderall some people drink alcohol like i like to smoke weed to put me in a, like a productive state of mind you know what i mean yeah and, oh me too yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing, and it's like such a blessing to be able to like feed my kids and you know live my life that I live uh, with cannabis. I'm like super grateful for it because you know as a kid, you know, you get in trouble for smoking weed. And yeah, shit. that was like a big thing with my parents. They just were not about the weed, and so now it's like I don't know. I was really passionate about weed even as a young kid, and so it's like it's cool it's like a dream come true you know to like have a job in weed and <clears throat> it's really fulfilling work you know i don't think i personally want to be in the garden doing something like that's not really my my specialty like i like the the work that i do is is pretty fulfilling yeah you know, for, for all of us really. well there's so many places in the industry and i mean yeah you guys have shown you guys are a super super culture oriented company um, you know, I've been to your facility. There's, you know, badass, wicked, fucking heady rigs. Um, the Kraken's on the table. Um, you know, samples from all your wonderful customers that from all over the country. Um, and it's like you guys actually consume what the machines you guys build make. Yeah, and that's cool because there's like, yeah, from from top to bottom, you guys are are in the culture, and I think that makes. A cannabis company or like you guys an ancillary company so much so much better yeah so, so much realer they're they're supposed to be there well and shout out to our clients too because <coughs> you guys are the, it's like the same vibe right yeah. like the the people that generally go with us are from the culture and yeah even if they are working with some chads like they got a yeah. representative of the culture. There's so you know what I mean there. on the team. There's the token. Yes, exactly, hundred <laughs> percent. The token cannabis you know? guy. And and so, <laughs> like it's cool, you know. Um, check out our website if you want to. There's a a, a map of all of our clientele. Um, we're still adding logos to it. Yeah, but we got like a good majority of them up. Um, and. There's still a lot on there that we're super proud of that we need to like keep adding. It's like an yeah. ongoing project for us. But um, Jesh knows your pain on that. He's got a client. We've got a kind of a clout map. Yeah, <clears throat> and it just blankets New Mexico, and and I'm sure yeah. um, there's there's a few there's a few that aren't on there, and and I'm they, the ones that aren't on there know. 
The yeah. ones that are on there don't even fucking know. The yeah. ones that aren't on there are the ones that are like, man, what the fuck? Why didn't they put us on? You, you think they have a problem with us? And then they're asking everybody, oh, did you say something to them? And it's just like you said. Just, yeah, yeah. And you haven't got to it Yeah, yet. yeah, no, yeah. If you don't see your logo on there, we're working on it for sure. Um, and send me a DM and bug me about it. And yeah, I'm, same, and I'm, I'm with, with it. Farmers. I'm with it. I need a rem reminders sometimes, you know. Um, but, like, it's, it's an honor to work with you guys. You guys, um, honestly, like, I, I got, you know, my ladies from out here, so – kind of know a few people that consume out here and um yeah i you know the industry out here is very new and emerging yeah and there's not a lot of people pumping out you know even just like let's say live resin yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah there's not a lot of options here in this state so <laughs> no we're um, one of the only live options for live res live yeah. resin in the state so i'm hoping that this trip here you know, you know with the canacon and in that block party at your spot like is a good opportunity to kind of like show them what the standard is for the rest of the country you know yeah what I mean? and, and then kind of like get the ball rolling here a little bit and uh yeah, you know, you, you know, guys, you a lot of it. a lot of big companies are coming out to Albuquerque this weekend for Canacon. That's pretty crazy. I I, I kind of tripped out. Um, you know, they've got to be watching the numbers. I'm sure. You know, statistically, yeah. you know the the states that go wreck. You know, we went wreck <coughs> about a year ago. Right. Um. So that probably falls in line with you know st when you want to throw a convention. Yeah. Um. And uh, no, but. I'm excited. You know, yeah. all the homies are coming down. So no, it's going to be, that's that's gonna be a cool. good one. A lot of good vendors are going to be here. And, you know, I feel like it's it's uh, just driving down the street, seeing all these like shops open is like mind blowing to me. I was here, I don't know, maybe like six months ago. And it wasn't, there wasn't, they flooded it wasn't like that. It's market like with retail here. It's lit out here. So I can only, and, you know, I've been to a couple of them and they don't got much on the shelves. They got stuff on the shelves, but it's not much. And so, can only imagine that people are um, ready to invest in the infrastructure that yeah. it takes to put stuff on the shelves. Yeah. And, uh, you know, let's yeah. get the people in New Mexico some fire and, you know, show them what good weed is all about. Fuck yeah. Where can, uh, if people are interested in checking out Busy Bee Systems and learning more about, you know, your company and uh, what you guys do, where can they find you guys? Uh, BusyBee.com, B I Z Z Y. B E E dot com. Um, you know, my Instagram is Kyle Wrangles Beasts and uh Boris's is busy bee dot extractors. And um, oh look I got Calvin Call me, they just landed. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um Hey, what's up? <laughs> Hell yeah. Um you're on the podcast with me and Donnie right now. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what you were saying for sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> Well, you want to just uh, maybe just Uber over here, or we're about to wrap it up right now, honestly, and then I could come swoop you. Are, uh, are you already yeah, off the plane? Just, uh, you just send me an address. Yep. Or you can just Uber there. Or I'll send you. The, I'll send you my location. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, my man. All right, peace. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So you know. Cool. Kyle Wrangles Beast. That's Calvin, Busy Beast Builder. And then check out Busy Bee Media. We're working on some projects, trying to get some YouTube stuff going, some more like full length YouTube stuff. My Instagram and Busy Bee Media and uh, Boris's, you know, we got all of our like client tours that we kind of put piece together. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're going to check your uh keep your eyes peeled for the farmers one that's about to come out oh yeah yeah you guys are on your jangler wrangler oh yeah world tour oh yeah so that's cool and i'm man. always popping into client spots just to make sure that i can do what you know whatever i can to keep them competitive and like show them oh you know have you seen these centrifuges like this is the tech this is what everyone's doing oh yeah what bottlenecks are you having like this will help alleviate this bottleneck and get you to your target. You well, know you I mean? guys sell a lot more than just closed loops. So, oh, yeah. hell yeah. Yeah, hell I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, Thanks I'll let you me, get bro. to your get to your boys that just landed, and uh, we'll uh, look forward to having fun this weekend, and we'll talk soon. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs>